Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is called The Queer Girl is Going to Be Okay, and this is by Dale Walls. There are actually three girls in this book. They are seniors in high school. They live in Texas. That would be the queer girls that the title is referring to. But it is also referring to the name of a documentary that one of the girls, Dawn, is making. So part of this project, her senior year, she's making a documentary where she's just basically filming all of her queer friends and having them tell her about their experience being queer. Whatever that means to them or whatever part of that they want to talk about, really with a focus on queer love. Dawn has entered a proposal for this documentary to a film fest in Austin, and if she gets into it and she wins, she will get a scholarship to the film school. Dawn spends most of her time with her two best friends, Georgia and Edie. And so these are the three girls that the book really centers around. And it's actually written from all of their points of view. So we get three different points of view. It goes back and forth in the chapters, which is really interesting and a great way to tell the story, I think. It's not as if we hear the same situation from the three points of view, but the story sort of progresses and we just hear about different parts of their lives. So we're not hearing like the same plot repeated by three different voices. And though there are these three girls that the book revolves around, I do feel like it's mostly Dawn's story. So all three of these girls are queer and in different situations as far as that and as far as just their family situation, their college situation, their high school situation. Dawn, as I said, really wants to go to film school. She lives alone with her father and she really has to take care of her father. It's not clear exactly what happened to him, but he has had some problems with depression and maybe with drinking since Dawn's mother died. So he really needs full-time care. And part of why Dawn wants a scholarship to go to school is so that she can use her savings to hire someone to take care of her dad. Edie is an overachiever in school. She already knows that she's going to Cornell. She's been accepted. Her parents are pretty conservative and they're pretty religious. So they have certain expectations about Edie and they're very strict as far as letting her go out at night and where she's allowed to go. And so Edie actually has to hide this big part, she feels like, of herself from her parents. Edie is in a relationship with another student named Ben. Ben is non-binary. And Edie won't really even introduce Ben to her family, even though they've been together for a long time and they are really in love because she doesn't think that they would accept Ben as non-binary. Ben has even said that they could just sort of skirt around that, but the whole situation makes Edie feel like she's going to be disappointing her parents, and she's scared also of their reaction. What's interesting also, though, is that part of introducing Ben to her parents means that Edie would have to be the person that she didn't expect to be. Be, or she's not expected to be, even internally. So that internal fear is a little bit of what drives Edie to not stand up to her parents. This is something that she's sort of working on throughout the whole book, and her relationship with Ben has to go through some rough patches in order for her and for Ben to figure out how they want to progress if they're really serious and how Edie can balance both her family and Ben in a way that is safe for everybody. Georgia lives alone with her mother. It's always just been Georgia and her mother, Frankie. Frankie was so young when she had Georgia that Georgia even calls her Frankie. They're like best friends. There's never been a father around. Georgia is sort of in a relationship with a girl named Jill, she's scared to call her her girlfriend, but she really, really likes her. And Jill's a year younger than them. Jill is not pursuing college at this point. And Georgia hasn't really applied to many schools either. She's 
doesn't do very well in school. She doesn't try very hard. And all of a sudden, she's sort of having this panic of what she's going to do when she graduates from high school. She feels a lot of stress about that. In addition to that, Edie's mother, Frankie, has started dating someone. And this person makes Georgia very uncomfortable when he's around and he's very inappropriate with Georgia. She doesn't know how to tell her mother about that. She doesn't want her mother to be upset. Her mother hasn't really dated anybody. But it's not tenable for this person to stay around with their family. So all three of these girls have something going on with their families that is complicated. And then they're sort of figuring out their relationship status or how they feel about love in general. And for Dawn making this documentary, it's a way for her to hear about how everybody else experiences queer love. But what it's also doing is it's really making her feel like she wants that too. And she's not sure how to seek it. We see from Dawn that she's kind of constantly hooking up with these people who really aren't good to her. There's some different boys that kind of come and go. And the more we learn about Dawn, the more we realize how harmful those relationships really have been and how they have been detrimental to her self-esteem as far as being in love. So part of this documentary is to really capture the whole experience of queer love through the eyes of her friends and everyone in her high school so that she can understand it better. She does meet someone online who's also entered a documentary into the same program and they really get along well because they have a lot in common as far as film and they're not together. There's not a pressure of anything happening physically between them. Dawn really feels like she's able to be herself. One of the things that I really loved about The Queer Girl is going to be okay is the friendship between these girls, but the realistic friendship that this book portrays. Dale Wallace does a great job of not always making everything perfect. There are moments that seem pretty easy, but then the friendship between these three definitely hits some rough patches and they are not always seeing eye to eye. They are sometimes honest with each other in a way that can be hurtful, but they are still best friends. And I think that the portrayal of that closeness where you're able to argue with someone and even sort of have some time apart, but then still maintain your really good friendship, that just seemed really realistic to me. I also really enjoyed getting the three points of view because what that did for me was really made me root for all three of these characters and I got to know them. I was in their heads and so you really are sort of invested in their stories as they're telling them. And so I found myself very moved by parts of this book because I feel like I'd been on this whole little roller coaster with them or I'd experienced all these emotions with them. The way they're written and the distinct voices that Dale Walls gives to each of them really strengthens that sense of character that comes off the page. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are the three girls and I felt I really did care about all of them. But to me, this really was Don's story. And because of that, I think when there are heartbreaking parts of Don's journey, you really feel it. There are difficult parts in this book, but this is a book that centers on love. This is a book that centers specifically on queer love. And this is a book that has a lot of joy. I miss these three girls when the book was finished, and I am excited to see what Dale Walls writes next. I hope that you decide to pick up The Queer Girl is Going to Be Okay. It's a great read. Thank you for joining me.